Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us at Kubernetes on Edge Day. Um, welcome to our session on bridging IoT Leaf devices to your edge clusters with Aukri and dynamic resource allocation. Um, my name is Eugen, and I'm a product manager at Microsoft under Azure Edge. And I'm Nicola, and I work at SUSE in the Edge BU, uh, and I'm also a maintainer of Aukri. All right, so I, today we'll go over um, what is Aukri, what is dynamic resource allocation, and how these two can work together to optimize you know, connecting to IoT Leaf devices at the edge. We'll also do a little demo and talk about our roadmap to going to an Aukri version 1.0. So I think Eric actually did a really great job summarizing kind of the challenges at the edge in Kubernetes today. Um, but I'm just going to summarize specifically um, IoT Leaf devices, which includes um, actuators, sensors, MCU class devices. And so these usually speak different protocols, and they all have different topologies. They also have heterogeneous requirements for authentication and storing secrets. Um, they may have intermittent availability and downtime, and these are constantly scaling up and down. And most importantly, they're usually too small, too old, or too locked down to run Kubernetes on themselves today. So how can we dynamically make these IoT Leaf devices available to Kubernetes workloads running in edge clusters? So in Kubernetes, we actually have the device plugin system. And um, if you're not aware, the device plugin system actually facilitates the discovery, advertisement, and allocation of specialized hardware and external devices. Um, this might include GPU, FPGA, um, high performance NICs, et cetera. But there are a few limitations with the device plugin system today. For example, there is no real resource sharing, so devices can't be shared among containers. Um, it also relies on a very um, specific, the device manager API, so you have to constantly track the versioning and compatibility of these. And it's also limited to hardware that are on nodes, so it doesn't really support network-based devices. So I want to talk to you about Aukri, which is our CNCF sandbox project. And Aukri actually stands for a Kubernetes resource interface. Um, it also means edge in Greek. And this actually extends the device plugin framework to make connection to these IoT Leaf devices via the protocols. For example, we have OPC UA, OnVIF, UDEV, et cetera. And it actually enables resource, resource sharing by registering these as Kubernetes resources using custom resource definitions. So that means workloads can be assigned to specific devices or group of devices, even if they're attached to other nodes. And if a node goes down, these configurations and properties will remain on the cluster so that other nodes can pick up any of your lost workloads. And Aukri is architected with extensibility in mind so that developers can easily add new discovery handlers and brokers. And it's also built with Rust to optimize for the edge and you know, low constraint clusters um, and devices. So I'll quickly go over the architecture of Aukri. So first, you have the Aukri configuration, as you can see on the right side. And this is a CRD, and this is where the user would tell Aukri what kind of device to look for. So you might say, hey, Aukri, use OPC UA protocol. And then you will also specify like what kind of workloads you want to put to all the devices that are found. Then you have the discovery handler. So Aukri will take in the configuration and deploy the discovery handler that you've specified. And this goes and looks for these devices using the protocols. Then it'll inform the agent of these discovered devices, and the Aukri agent is the one that handles the resource availability changes and enables the sharing of these devices. And so the agent will create an Aukri instance, which is another custom resource definition, and this is made to track the availability and usage of these devices. 
And finally, you have the Augury controller. And the controller will see each Augury instance and deploy a broker pod that will help you utilize those devices. So now I'll uh, get over what is dynamic resource allocation. So dynamic resource allocation is a kind of a new thing in Kubernetes uh, that aims to improve what device plugin does. So basically, uh, it has a way better support for network-based devices. Uh, it has, uh, well, way less, uh, I'd say, of the shortcomings of device plugins because here you have the driver with uh, its own control plane that is able to intervene directly in the scheduling process of the pods. So basically you can have more control with your driver on the pods just that are scheduled, where they are scheduled, and you have uh, the ability to have devices that are shared between containers, that are shared between pods, you can have, well, you basically have way more control than what you have with device plugins. So basically, uh, as it doesn't work the same, it means, well, first, how this works. It's very similar to how uh, container storage works you currently in Kubernetes. So basically, you define a resource class and with optional uh, class parameters that are uh, up to the driver. And then you can use uh, resource claim or resource claim templates to use that, uh, well, resource or device uh, within pods. So you can reference them from one pod or multiple pods. And they will all use, uh, if you use the template, the template would get, uh, well, implemented for every time you uh, reference it. If you uh, reference a claim, it will be the same. Uh, so how it goes when you apply this for Acre? So it means we have to make uh, small changes. So currently we have a single configuration object that does everything from, uh, well, getting all the discovery information, like what uh, protocol you want to talk, the details about this, and it also do things like uh, workload deployment uh, things, like uh, for every device I want to deploy that workload. Uh, that is something that Acre does, and currently it's the, uh, a single object for this. So first we have to split that object in two, so we can use the discovery part uh, as a parameter for uh, the resource class. So here we see in the resource class, I use a parameter that is the discovery configuration, and that's how the uh, Acre uh, driver works on this. So, uh, and then when you do your claim for, for using the device that is discovered, you basically refer to the resource class, and you can add another parameter here, that is an instance filter that is a new resource in uh, Acre uh, that basically allow you to further uh, f filter what devices that were discovered uh, are going to be used for the claim. So you can, well, it's pretty standard uh, use there. Uh, another change that is needed is in the architecture of Acre. Currently, we have the controller that uh, does the uh, scheduling the workload and uh, monitoring the node's health so that it can prune uh, dead node's uh, devices. And we have the agent that does everything else. Uh, the agent is deployed on every node. So every node basically uh, query the discovery handlers, manage the instances, uh, talk with the kerblets, and manage all the device plugins because there are many. Uh, because we, to make Acre work like it, uh, we want it to work, we have to create one device plugin per device that is discovered. 
So it makes a lot of device plugin to manage. And it also has to guess when a slot gets freed because with device plugin, you don't get any notification when uh, a pod stops using the device. And so we switch from that to splitting the controller in two with the workload controller that still uh, schedule the workload, the driver controller that is basically doing all the uh, dynamic resource allocation work that will uh, allocate and deallocate resource claims that will watch for node health so it can prune uh, devices that are no longer available or nodes that are no longer available from the list of schedulable nodes there. And it keeps track of device usage. So to ensure that you don't use you don't overuse your devices because you specify uh, a capacity in the discovery uh, the discovery configuration that is the maximum number of users of a device and then the agent does way less uh, so it's way simpler as well so it just queries the discovery handler manages the instances that are the discovered devices it talks with the cablet to uh, do the 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 DRA, uh, well, plugin thing, and it managed what is called CDI entries. CDI is for um, container device uh, interface, I think. Never remember the I. And it's basically the uh, description of how a device is formed, and that is passed to the uh, um, container, uh, well, the CRI, so that it can get passed correctly to the con underlying container. So basically, it means that when you want to use a device, you have your pod, you had your resource claim there, you add it in your container to say this container want to use that claim, and then you have on here, it's a resource claim template. You have your, your template that references your, um, your resource class and then your resource class. You, you can also have a, uh, here an instance filter that further uh, narrow the discovered devices. Here the example is about, for example, a, a robot where you have a property that says uh, this one is more precise and then you can have uh, your container that say, okay, I want to use any uh, robot that is available or I want to use only the ones that are more precise. So this way you can filter. And these properties are exposed by the discovery handlers. So basically, uh, if, you can, if you need uh, to extend that, I have more properties exposed, then you can write your own discovery handler quite easily. So. Now we're going to try to do a live demo. So uh, can I let you present the architecture? Yes, yeah, so we have an edge cluster with three nodes and we can see that we have Augury deployed on there with the workload controller, driver controller on one of the nodes as well as a web service for taking in the printer job requests. And we're using the MDNS discovery handler to connect to our Raspberry Pi, which is connected to our printer, and also a UDEV discovery handler, which is connected to our display. So basically what we're gonna do is, if it works, <laughs> the Wi-Fi has been a bit flaky today, but we're gonna have a QR code and you can basically scan, scan the QR code to put in a printer job request and hopefully that will then print something. Okay. Uh, so I will try to see if it works. So I'll go here and refresh the, okay, no. <laughs> we are out of range for, for the Wi-Fi, so it's quite flaky when I set up here. So maybe as it's flaky, sometimes it gets back. So yeah, okay, no luck. <laughs> Sorry for, uh, so basically this demo will also be uh, available on, uh, will be put, on work on different uh, places. Uh, like, uh, well, yeah. I can go on the slide that precise this. 
Okay. Go back in slideshow. Uh, oh, this one. So yeah, we have the SUSE booth outside uh, where we are going to set up the demo after uh, the talk as well, so you can see it. So basically, we have this printer that is going to print uh, things when you enter your, the, the, the data you want to print on the form you uh, glimpsed at. <laughs> before. So then we also have this uh, set up at the Acre kiosk uh, we have at the project booth uh, during the main event. And it will also be uh, still at the SUSE booth and we will have a presentation on Friday on the Microsoft booth that will also feature the demo. Um, so I'm going to get back to the wrong map and give it back to you. All right, so before we finish up, I want to quickly talk about our roadmap to getting to an Ocri V1.0. We're hoping to get to this very soon, so th these are the three kind of sections that we're working on. So first, we want to add features um, on top of the DRA work that we're doing. We also want to enable arbitrary workload scheduling. So right now, you know, you can schedule broker work pods, workload pods to any device that is found, and we actually want to enable Able, being able to schedule other types of you know resources as well. Maybe you want to schedule or create a custom resource for any device that is found. Um, we also want to implement a status field to get more information about the Aukri configuration and instance resources. Um, for example, is the broker scheduled? Are they ready, etc. Um, we also want to add a external query service, which would enable device gating and requesting additional information such as metadata of the devices or the credentials. And then we want to do other production readiness things such as a security assessment. Um, currently on the GitHub, you can find some of our um, threat modeling that we did. We also want to do some performance benchmarking and stress testing just to know what the limits of Aukri deployments are. And we also want to improve our end-to-end -end, um, test use cases of our releases. So currently, we do have a few, like testing OPC UA and Onviv, but we really want to flesh all these out and make sure we get all the edge cases. And finally, we also want to make it really easy for everyone to contribute. Um, so first, we want to define a clearer version of the maintainer policy. So what does it mean to be a maintainer, um, being a part of like our issue triage rotation, and um, hoping to do you know, solve three bugs every quarter or something like that. Um, we also want to split up the repository. So right now, you know, the agent and discovery handler sample, they're all in one big repo, but we're going to try and split up the repository so that we move out some of the samples and discovery handler and brokers so that if you want to just com contribute to the core component, you can do that. Or if you want to add a discovery handler for another protocol, you can do that as well. And obviously, we want to improve the documentation, not only for using it, but also for um, contributing and testing. So we have a new release of version 0.12.20. So check our, our release notes. And you can also read our docs. And we also have a bunch of community proposals on some of the work that we mentioned adding for v1.0 and you can even add one yourself and we hope to see you on our slack channel at hashtag Aukri on kubernetes workspace and join our community we have community meetings every first tuesday of the month at 5 p.m cest or 8 a.m pst So yeah, again, I think Nicola went over some of these, but we'll have the Aukri demo running in a bunch of these places. So we really hope you can check it out. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to swing by at any of these places. 
And we hope you leave some feedback on our session. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and if you have any questions, let us know. So the demo seems to be working. A, it might work. So again, I'll try again and see. Yeah. So here I have this uh, form. Uh, and you see here, if I go back. So uh, if you scan this QR code, you get to the form that will allow you to, basically here we see we have a, a few parts that are scheduled. Uh, some are, uh, and the ones that are pending are requests that have been sent to the printer. And here you see that it prints, it basically prints uh, the, well, what you uh, prompted it in the, in the form. So here we see the different pods uh, that are getting uh, scheduled. And we have here the resource claims uh, that are getting uh, assigned for every uh, pod that is created. And these resource claims here are pending, except one here that is allocated, that is the one that is currently printing. And then uh, we'll see the different, uh, well, uh, jobs that are here for on the Pods specific, and that gets uh, well uh, scheduled and trigger a print there. So yeah, a bit quicker than expected on this, but yeah. Yeah. So if you put in a request, please come up and grab your sticker <laughs> after. <laughs> All right, any questions? Hi, ah, yeah. So if we have multiple printers with different, I'm, it, I'm just making a metaphor. If we have a multiple GPUs with different architectures, is it still possible? Uh, yes, well, uh, as long as you can have a discovery handler that, uh, well, you, a configuration can only be linked to a single discovery handler. So if you need multiple discovery handlers, then they will be seen as different uh, classes. But uh, if you are just, uh, well, if you have a single uh, discovery handler that can handle all your devices, then it can be uh, seen as the same class of device, so they can all be uh, well picked up and scheduled uh, as this is done there. Okay, so as we as long as we do the configuration right, we can uh, choose which actual device we can schedule a job to, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, hi again, thank you for your presentation. Um, based on the slide 13, if I'm not mistaken, you said that you divide the controller to the um, a driver controller and also the worker controller, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And uh, you repeat some part of the task of the controller about the health check and also the track of device uh, using the um, devices. Is there change any applied to this or you just said, okay, we need to separate this and uh, the modified part is workload controller? Uh, well, we decided to split it to have more like ownership of uh, on this, so basically, everything that is related to schedule the workload is in the workload controller and everything that is uh, linked to uh, scheduling the devices in, is in the driver controller. So this way, uh, from a permission point of view, uh, the workload cont controller is the only one that has the right to create the resources and uh, that is the only one that will have uh, access to the 
um, workload configuration, while the driver controller doesn't need access to this. So from a security standpoint, it's uh, better to split them that way. So uh, no need to change any part of the task that, that we have before for the North Health or crap of de device usage in your use case. They are the same scenario, yes? Yes, they are the same scenario, just we can have them in with more simple controllers and agents, and we can better track uh, the usage so we don't, uh, well, basically, with the current architecture of Acre, there is a rare case where you can basically uh, overuse a device because uh, the scheduler and the uh, Acre controller enter in a race. So this new architecture with the array uh, basically uh, removed that possible race. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Um, if you could maybe go to the PLC robot example, the, the slide with the OPC OR server thing. Yeah. yeah. In that example, for instance, how would, say, say an OPC OR server has an IP address, how would that get exposed to the, to the workload, to the port that's scheduled? Uh, all the properties that are uh, discovered by the discovery handler then will be uh, shown as environment variables to the containers. Oh, very nice. Thanks. 